Hello everybody and welcome to NOAA for A-Level. This is the first A-Level physics video and we'll be looking at electricity. And note, this video is applicable for both GCSE and A-Level content. That's why it's got both of the logos in it. So in this video, we'll be going through the following six things. So make sure you check out the timestamps if you want to answer a specific question. And an exam tip, you can use these as prompts for active recall for your exams. But let's go through them. So firstly, what actually is current and voltage? So let's derive this from our understanding of electrons. When we think about how electrons and elements in the periodic table in general, they react. They're reacting in order to gain the nearest noble gas structure, a full outer shell. So they are either going to lose electrons or gain electrons, as you can see here. Now, electricity is defined as the movement of charged particles. Now, you can see then that as those electrons are moving to another um, to its other reacting element, that's suggesting that since the electron is a charged particle, it's negatively charged, that is electricity, the movement of charged particles. So the ability for the valence electrons, which just means the outer shell electrons, to turn into delocalized electrons, which are mobile electrons, electrons are able to freely move about is different for these three different materials. So if you look at for an insulator, there's actually a gap between the valence band and conduction band, and it's a very big gap, which basically means that it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of energy for the outer shell electrons to suddenly become conducting, to suddenly be able to move about and become delocalized. And that's why insulators are insulators, they're not very good conductors of either heat or electricity. Then you have semiconductors. Now, semiconductors have a small band gap, so it takes a little bit less energy for the outer shell electrons to turn into delocalized electrons. And then for metals, the two bands are actually overlapping. So the electrons that are outer shell electrons are also conduction band. So all of the outer shell electrons for any metal are delocalized electrons. And that's why we'll look at soon in a while. But firstly, when we're talking about valence electrons turning into delocalized electrons, current is basically measuring how quickly those charged carriers, so those electrons, are moving in a wire. So it's all to do with the chemistry of it, but that's just understanding where the electrons come from. Current is how fast they're moving in a wire. So the exam definition of current that you're going to need to memorize is the rate of flow of charged particles. Now, key things to break down here. Why is it rate? Well, rate means how quickly. So it's equivalent to charge divided by time. And that's how from that definition, we can derive the equation current is equal to charge divided by time. The second part of the definition of charged particles, there's a reason why we didn't say of electrons, because it's not just electrons that can move and carry charge. We'll look at now how we're in the process of electrolysis, where the ions are made to move from an ionic solution to the oppositely charged electrode. We can see there that ions can also move and therefore Ions could also be a charged particle, which could cause electricity or current. So using our understanding of conduction bands and what current is, we now know, as I was saying earlier, why wires are made from metal. Because all of the valence electrons will can easily get up and just start carrying that charge as soon as the circuit is switched on. And that's what makes them a really valuable wire because that's what you want. You want all of the electrons to start get up and moving because then you get current. So now let's look at what causes current. Short answer is voltage or potential difference. So voltage is the pressure that is pushing the electrons around a circuit. It's causing current. Current cannot 
be there because the electrons aren't just going to start getting up and all flowing in the same direction. You're not going to get current unless you have voltage, unless you have some sort of pressure pushing all of the electrons around the circuit. So this diagram really does sum up the three key aspects. So the voltage is the pressure pushing the electrons forward and naturally the electrons also want to go forward because they're attracted to the positive terminal being negatively charged, opposites attract. But that pressure just ensures that they are all going in the same direction because when, electro when there's no potential difference, the electrons are still moving around but just in a random thermal motion instead of all in one direction. So that's the purpose of potential difference that therefore induces a current and resistance, which we'll look at later on a bit more detail, is the opposition to the flow of current. We're looking a bit more at the exam definition of what voltage or potential difference is, it's defined as the difference in energy over a component per coulomb of charge. So what we're saying then is that it's basically measuring the difference in energy at this point. For example, if the power supply is six volts, then at this point it'll be six volts. But once the six volts goes through the filament lamp, voltage is going to get used up because remember one volt is equal to one joule of energy per coulomb of charge. So you have six joules of energy per coulomb of charge per, which is basically saying six coulombs of elect six joules of energy per coulomb of electrons, per amount of electrons here. But that same amount of electrons here will then have two joules of energy because this uses up four, for example. So what it's doing is it's measuring the voltage before, the energy before, and the energy after per group of electrons. And it's therefore, by doing that, it's calculating the potential difference required or the energy required per amount of electrons of the filament lamp. So I hope you appreciate I'm trying to break these concepts down into very understandable bites so that it just helps you with your understanding. Hence, voltage then gets that equation. We said that one volt is equivalent to one joule of energy per coulomb of charge. When we're talking about a coulomb of charge, that just means a certain number of electrons. Part three, how does current then move? So we touched on this a little bit. When we're talking about the movement of electrons in a wire, when there's no potential difference applied, it's moving like this. Electrons are moving randomly, hitting at any side possible, all in different directions. This is called random thermal motion. It's when these valence electrons are moving to and fro the metal crystal lattice. And where do we get that term metal crystal lattice? Well, say if the wire was a copper wire, the electrons of the copper will be moving around the copper itself, the positive ions. And it's at one thousandth the speed of light. Let's look at when there is potential difference applied. What do the electrons look at look like then? Well, this is what the electrons look like. Not exactly, because in reality, there will be those positive metal atoms still within the wire, and the electrons will be bumping and colliding, trying to get through to them. But that's the main idea. So when potential difference is applied, what happens is an electric field is created. And this electric field causes the negative electrons to suddenly become attracted to the and move towards the positive terminal of the cell because as I said, opposites attract. Because remember for a cell or a battery, you've got the positive terminal and the negative terminal. So the electrons are gonna move from the negative side to the positive. And that's the direction of electron flow. However, the direction of conventional current is from positive to negative. So conventional current is just an agreed upon term in which people always thought that everything will move from positive to negative Therefore, they just assumed that that current moves that way. But in reality, we learnt that electrons move the opposite way, yet they decided to keep that term conventional current. Now, 
you need to know this for A level, not for GCSE, the charge on a single electron is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. We know that coulombs is the unit for charge and therefore each electron is going to have that much charge and in reality this is a bit mistaken it should be a negative sign because it's negatively charged because in reality this is actually the charge of a proton because it's positive minus 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs is equal to the charge on a single electron part four three things that current causes a current causes these three things and you'll look at them in more detail across GCSE and A-level physics. So the first thing is a magnetic field. Secondly, chemical changes. For example, as we said, electrolysis of ionic solutions. And thirdly, increases in temperature in whatever is carrying the current. What do we then, what effect does that then have? That has the effect of resistance. And that's the next part of the video, part five, resistance. The resistance is defined as the opposition to the flow of current. Why is there opposition in the first place? Well, as I said, if it's a copper wire and you have the electrons, the delocalized electrons, which are the valence electrons, moving about, it's left the, the positive metal ions left there and they do not move so the red pluses that you can see on the screen they are the positive metal atoms they're the fixed lattice they stay there so instead of the electrons moving flowing all in the same direction they have to kind of bounce and collide through the lattice to get to the positive terminal and those are called the collisions now let's look at ohm's law so ohm's law is there's two parts to the definition. Firstly, it's under the assumption that there are constant physical conditions and, con and things like temperature. And then the, the main part is that current is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. So Ohm's law is basically talking about the relationship between current and voltage. Part six, looking at EMF and internal resistance. This is the part GCSE students do not need. So in order for a current to flow, we need to have a potential difference. And in order for there to be a difference in energy per coulomb of charge, we then need an energy source to provide this. So we have this idea that's very kind of similar to voltage and it's called electromotive force, EMF. So electromotive force in exam terms is defined as the amount of energy supplied to each unit of charge volts. Often definitions talk about how it's chemical energy to electrical energy, so chemical energy from the battery to the electrical energy of the circuit. So what is actually the difference then between potential difference and EMF? Let's be clear about this. What we're talking about is two totally different energy transfers. EMF has to come first. So EMF is the energy transferred from the chemical store of the battery to each unit of charge. So to each individual electron, EMF is what's happening there. So in, since it's measured in volts, it's basically saying the energy supplied to each coulomb of electrons. That's EMF. When talking about potential difference, potential difference is more a measure of the work being done. So it's actually where the energy carried by the current causes the changes to occur, um, the actual electrical work. So EMF is the energy transferred from the power supply to each unit of charge and potential difference is the energy transferred from those units of charge to the components for electrical work to be done. So hopefully that makes it clear because on the internet it definitely isn't clear, there's so much conflicting ideas, but hopefully this makes it clear about the differences between the two. 
The second concept that is new to you from GCSE is internal resistance. So we know that there's resistance in a circuit due to there's resistance in the wires, there's resistance in the components, but we haven't come across internal resistance, which is the resistance found within a power supplier. So within the battery itself, effectively. So that's why normal, the total resistance in the circuit is often defined with the uppercase R and internal resistance is denoted with the lowercase R. So what happens is you have your power supply, the source of EMF, and people normally put it in this sort of box and next to the power supply, you put a resistor and with a, a small r and you don't actually have a real life resistor there it's just being used to symbolize that there's internal resistance in the emf source okay so since the potential difference faces resistance within the battery the potential difference value doesn't account for this so when we're talking about the potential difference, it's only talking about the overall resistance excluding the internal resistance. The EMF would take into account the total resistance plus the internal resistance. So what's happening here is that some potential difference is being wasted away at this resist at at this internal resistance. So that's why the EMF might not be the same as the potential difference. Because the EMF is the energy supplied, but then the and it accounts for the total resistance, but the potential difference is the energy supplied once the internal resistance has taken up some voltage already. So that's where we get these equations from. EMF is equal to the voltage plus the lost volts. So the lost volts meaning the volts that have been lost because of the internal resistance. And we know that V is equal to IR, so the lost volts would equal the current of the circuit. If it's a series circuit, it will be the same as everywhere else, just multiplied by the internal resistance. So often you'll get a practical in A-level physics, in which you will have to draw a graph like this, and you've got the voltage on the y-axis and the current on the x-axis. So another definition of electromotive force is when the is the potential difference when the current is zero, because there's no resistance there, so it's going to be exactly the same. So that's why, from this graph, you can easily figure out what is what. So where the, there's the y-axis intercept, that's the EMF value because that's where the current is equal to zero. And then also using equations and finding the function of the graph in terms of y equals mx plus c, that will allow you to realize that the gradient is equal to the negative internal resistance. So you can find out both of these values by drawing a simple graph. So thank you so much for watching this first physics video. I'm trying to break down the concepts into baby steps because it just helps you understand things and it means less memorization for the final exam. If you do find this video helpful, then feel free to check out my other A-level series. And if you have any younger siblings or younger friends, then feel free to tell them about the GCSC videos as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and stay tuned for the next videos.